All right, namaste. Let's start with our prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat, Parabrahma, Tasme, Shri, Guru Venama, Om Bhu Bhuva Swaha, Tad Savitra Vare Neyam, Bhargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat, Asto Ma Sat Gamiya, Tamso Ma Jyotir Gamiya, Mrityur Ma Amritam Gamiya, Om Sehna Vabhatu, Sehna Bhunatu, Sehviryam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvishavahi, Om Shanti 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 Om. So Narad Bhakti Sutra, we just started last week and we went through first three verses. In the first verse, it said that now the doctrine of devotion we shall expound. Athato Bhaktim Vyakhyasya. Sorry about this sound. I think the neighbors are cleaning their yard. So hopefully they'll move away soon. Satu Param Prem Rupaha Asmin. That devotion is indeed of the nature of supreme love. Supreme love is the love See, ashram is always quieter, right? City is too many people. So this supreme love is directed towards God. Because we love worldly people, worldly things also. But the supreme love is always for God. So that's what we learned last week. Then the third one. Amrit Savrupacha. The supreme love for the God which is called devotion or divine devotion. And the nature of this is immortality also, Amrit. Immortality. It's constant. It doesn't change. It's eternal. Amrit. It feels like Amrit. Okay. So any question in these three verses? Because I told you that first six sutras is talking about what this divine love is, what the bhakti is. And then after that, section two is going to tell us the uniqueness of this divine love. And then section three in chapter one, definition of divine love. So this is a, a verse all the way up to verse 24. It is first chapter. Okay, altogether how many chapters? Ten chapters. Okay, so let's look at uh, verse number four today. Because after you attain this kind of a love, supreme love, what really happens? What do you really feel inside? He says, Yat labdhava puman siddho bhavati amrito bhavati tripto bhavati Yat means that that which that means bhakti, the devotion, the supreme love. Labdhava, having gained. Puman means a person. Siddhu means perfect. Bhakti means becomes. Amrito, immortal. Bhavati becomes tripto, satisfied. Again, bhavati means becomes. So having gained this supreme love, supreme devotion, the devotee attains perfection and immortality and becomes extremely satisfied, tripto. 
Okay, let's look at these terms. A person who has discovered in himself the supreme devotion for the Lord, he has gained everything to be gained. So that's why Narad Ji is saying he becomes a Siddha. Siddho Bhavati. He is not talking about uh, the worldly Siddhis. Those powers. He is talking about you feel that perfection. You are connected with the perfect. The perfect is only God. And you are connected with perfect. You feel the perfection. Because to a true devotee the worldly powers they have no value to be able to fly to be able to become big or small those are the siddhis they don't have any value that's why yogi never uses those powers for himself for others yogi might use it but over here siddhi really means he feels oneness with the God, the Siddh. Okay, so not the Ashta Siddhis. So just remember that part. So, so when you get Bhakti, these are the benefits out of Bhakti. One time, Lord Ram asked Kak Bushundi, because there is a scripture where they have a dialogue also. Lord Ram and Kak Vishundi. Kak Vishundi was a saint. And Lord Ram said, ask anything. Riddhi, Siddhi, Moksha. He was offering all this to Kak Vishundi. What did Kak Vishundi say? He said, give me the divine love that bhakti, which yogis and rishis seek for. And with your grace, one in a million receives. I want that kind of a bhakti. So in this kind of a perfection, a bhagat's heart melts. And all the energy flows towards the direction of the Lord. That is the Siddhi he is talking about. Siddh. So Bhakti will perfect your heart. Siddho Bhakti. There will be compassion. For creation also. Because whose creation is it? Lord's. Perfection. And Amrito Bhavati, he's saying it will make you immortal. That really means what is immortal in us? Is the body immortal? Does it mean that Bhagat doesn't die? Bhagat truly understands experiences that who I am, my real nature. The real essence is Atma, which never dies. That's why we sing this mantra also, Astoma Satgamya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityurma Amritam Gamya. So that is Amrita. Immortal. We want to realize that of a real nature. So Bhakti takes you towards that. Even the desire of liberation, a Bhagat doesn't have that. Bhagat only wants love for God. So not even a Mukti. A Bhagat doesn't even mind coming back again and again into a body because understands this is just a body. Mukti is just a side effect. Bhagat can attain any time, but he realizes I am the Atma, which is part of Paramatma. And the Triputo Bhavati, Bhakti will satisfy you completely. No worldly desire. 
this is how we can really check ourselves our worldly desires going down as we are increasing our heat of bhakti in us but the worldly desires are still growing so tripto bhavati because we have been searching for endless lifetimes endless relationships we have had many mothers many fathers many siblings many children that is like a desire desire to have more but we all know that perfect relationship perfect master perfect father perfect friend that is god that's how bhakti will satisfy all our desires there is nothing bigger than god okay so three things siddh that means perfection in you amrit you realize what is the immortal part in you and then ultimately tripta that no desires no desire whatsoever so maybe we cannot say that we don't have any desire but our our desires less or not than before watch for that okay then he says yat prapye na kimchit vanchati na shochati na dveshti na ramte na utsahi bhavati yat prapye having attained and you already know now what after attained what that kind of a bhakti supreme bhakti supreme devotion so having obtained that which is true devotion to the lord no means not kinchit anything vanchati desires no shochati nar grieves okay so vanchati is what we don't have shochati is what we thought that is ours and it has been taken away so neither of these emotions na dveshti does not feel enmity towards anybody okay na ramte ramte means rejoices na utsahi utsahi is enthusiastic one who is enthusiastic through self interest bhakti becomes so having attained that devotion he cares for nothing never grieves never hates never delights in anything and he finds no urge or enthusiasm for sense enjoyments okay so all of this is about the worldly things worldly relationships so when an individual has gained the supreme joy of full devotion to the lord so he comes to live in a sense of utter fulfillment so all of this is the outcome of that utter fulfillment and no more any desire for the things of the world and the things means the relationships also the name and the fame also things are not just only the physical objects okay so a great master of devotion has ex- exclaimed how can there be any attraction for the foul smelling ditch water of sensuality to one who is swimming in the ocean of a hari bhakti it's like a clean water perfect water all around you why you want to go towards something dirty so a devotee is the only one who, who knows this who has experienced who has smelled that clean water so true devotee has nothing to gain not even the joys of the heaven actually if somebody says that i'll give you a seat in the heaven the devotee says i don't want that 
let alone the this world's pleasures okay so his only demand is that his love for his lord must ever increase he cares for nothing else na kinchit vanchate na kinchit not even a minuscule of it and we often talk about the term grief grief is the feeling that comes in the human mind when something already you have obtained already acquired it's like a attachment to that and you think it has been lost something was yours it is taken away that's a grief the body says nothing is mine nothing is mine i am god's and god is with me what is the grief for for anything so so it all comes from a practice of detachment from vairagya no attachment to anything in the world around entire attachment with only that only for that eternal truth so that's why in a common language also they say the lover's heart knows no grief okay the lover's heart so a true devotee in his supreme love recognizes everything as the play of the lord of his heart the heart of the lover is ever dwelling in the thoughts of his beloved so there's no time because god is always with him there's no time to feel any that i want something or something has been taken away from me you all have studied bhagavad gita chapter 12 verse number 17 यो न हृष्यति न द्वेष्टि न सोचति न कांक्षति शुभ अशुभ परित्यागी भक्ति मान य सम्मे प्रिया सो दिस काइंड ऑफ अ भगत इज वेरी डियर टू मी लॉर्ड विष्णु सेज सो ओवर हियर नारद जी इज सेइंग द सेम थिंग इफ यू आर स्टिल रनिंग टुवर्ड्स द वर्ल्डली प्लेजर्स वी हैव नॉट सेंस्ड दिस एट ऑल द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ लव फॉर गॉड okay so it's like a person who has recognized this has got the highest emotion highest thing so this is a person has attained god's love he wants nothing else it's almost like when we have gotten the highest the lower automatically it just moves away from you and there's nothing higher than god there's nothing else to look up to or want so everything just to falls short so bhakti will stop our mind this kind of a bhakti will stop our mind to run into the worldly pleasures so your mind is just attached to one thing all the time and that is lord okay but first it doesn't uh, you don't reach there right away this is why the sadhana is needed morning evening here and there do the sadhana take your mind first we take it forcibly then when you really have really tasted the nectar automatically you will go there okay so if the mind is still wandering into the world that means nectar has not been tasted okay so we got to make this a sadhana even stronger okay so just be very vigilant about it because right now for us bhakti is a moment to moment thing or morning and evening thing but ultimately you will remember god all the time no matter what is happening in good times also and not so good time also with the family also without the family also day also night also all the time you will remember 
So this is, uh, we got to make this as our goal. That's why we are reading this. We got to have a little elevation in spirituality. So it's not just something we only read, something we understand, but this is where we need to go to. So let's look at next one, number six. Yat gyatva mata bhavati stabda bhavati atma ramo bhavati. See, when there are no worldly desires, when there's no enthusiasm about the worldly affairs, what really happens? So this is an outcome of the previous stage. You cannot just jump up to this stage right away. Yat gyatva, having known that which is true devotion to God, known, matabhavati becomes intoxicated. So intoxicated in the love for God. Stabda bhavati becomes silent, peaceful. And what becomes peaceful? Mind does, intellect does, even the body does. Stabda. Atma rama bhavati becomes united in the self. If we are still in between, running into the outer field, we really cannot experience this. Okay, just remember that this is a very high stage. So having known that kind of a devotion, one becomes intoxicated, silent and enjoys in the self. See, right now we want to enjoy in the outer field. Devotee, this level of a devotee feels the enjoyment right within. So this comes after that all consuming devotion. So this kind of a person becomes mad with his own love divine. He sings the glory of the Lord always. There's nothing else in, in this kind of a person's mind. He will cry in the ecstasy of joy. We cry for the world. The devotee cries for the God. He laughs in his own floods of inner peace. He smiles, weeps, dances and rolls in ecstasy. It's like a private bliss this person feels constantly with no sense of shame or reserve. Devotee will burst out chanting and singing his glories in the names and his mind becomes merged with the Lord of his love. That's where Surdas Ji wrote all those couplets. Tulsi Das Ji wrote the Ramayan. Meera Bai, in the streets, just kept singing. Where was all that coming from? From this love for Lord. Mato Bhavati, you become intoxicated. A true devotee <coughs> lunches deeper and deeper into his own inner quietude to reach ultimately the realm of the self. Atma, Atma, Ramo, Bhakti. So this all comes from that power of Bhakti. So this mat or intoxication or madness, this is from the rust of divine love. We have seen people getting intoxicated from the material world. That intoxication goes away after some time. That's why Guru Nanak Dev Ji, when he went to the court of the Mughal Emperor Babar, what did he say? Because Babar offered him a cup, cup of opium, the bhang. Guru Nanak Dev Ji, he said, bhang tambaku chotra, utar jai prabhat. So this intoxication, 
can last only for few hours. Nam Kumari, Kumari Nanaka, Jadi Rehe Din Raat. So that intoxication, once we have it, it will not go away. That's a good kind of intoxication. It keeps our mind clean, intellect sharp. From this intoxication, those rishis, their intuition raised and they came up with those countless mantras which we recite from this kind of intoxication. Okay, so this is like a high of the intoxicant results into that love for God. This is a good kind of intoxication. So bliss of God is so much that stay with you day and night. Chadi rehe din raat. There is a, you, we all studied Ramayana. In Chitrakut, there was a Rishi, Rishi Sutikshan. He waited, he knew Lord Ram will come. He waited for Lord Ram, singing and dancing, day and night. He knew that Lord will come. When Lord come, Rad came, Bhagat was in Samadhi. In Samadhi, he was dancing and he was singing. Sutikshan. Okay, this is what happens to a Bhagat. So Bhakti will intoxicate you. When intoxication becomes too much, then mind and intellect Sometimes to stop working also. Because mind and intellect, they are the tools to work in this world. When you go inward, they become still. That's what stabad means. So becomes stabdo. And after stabd, because you have gone so internal, atmaramo, devotee becomes atmaram. So someone who's rejoicing in the self, referring to Paramatma, they will even say that I, I as a God, because there's no difference between the Atma and Paramatma for this kind of a person. So that's why he used the word Yat Gyatva. Yat Gyatva, merely by knowing him, knowing this power of knowledge, if you truly know him, this is what happens to you. You will uh, definitely fall in love completely. Because Gyatva means the knowledge, when you know what God is, what is the importance of God in our life? It's almost like if I find something on the street and I don't know the value of it, I will just discard it. But if I know the value of it, that it is very precious gem, then I will save it. The same way, when we develop this connection, when we know what God is, then everything else is so flimsy. So this is what Yat Gyatva, not just a mere belief, not just attraction, but true knowledge. So let me read it again. Uh, he says, Yat Gyatva Mata Bhavati, Stabda Bhavati, Atamaramo Bhakti. So if we have any one of these, even in a minuscule level in our personality, that is a good sign that our love for God is increasing. Bhakti and Gyan. Gyan means knowledge. They go hand in hand. Bhakti and Gyan. This Gyan, Gyan about God. When Bhakti enhances Knowledge merges. Okay? So it's not just bhakti and jnana. They are two separate things. They enhance each other. Okay? Many times I have mentioned my own Guruji's words. Wo bhakti bhakti nahi jo jnana na de. Wo jnana jnana nahi jo bhakti na bhakti ki taraf na lekar jaye. So they both enhance each other. Okay? 
and first devotee doesn't know but with this love we'll find out so these opening six sutras up to here is like a general picture of the divine devotion and the next eight sutras we will see clearly the exclusive nature of the divine bhakti okay so this was in the general now he'll go a little deeper so it's like a right now he's telling us knowledge which leads to faith which leads to love sa na kaam kaam me mana nirodh roop tvat sa means that that bhakti that love devotion na kaam me mana there is no element of desire in it nirodh roop tvat being of the nature of renunciation nirodh okay renunciation because it is of the nature of renunciation there is no element of desire in that love divine because if our formula of love is take 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 then there is no change in us even from god we want god give me this give me that so many desires we have and if we give some and we want to take some still there is no change that's a business relationship this kind of a change will happen only when it's only give that's a true love true love only gives okay so that's why he says asana kamya mana nirodh roop tvat because it's of the nature of renunciation there is no element of desire in that love divine otherwise it's a kamna bhagati it's not a nishkam bhag bhagti because a devotee's only desire is for the love of his heart's beloved that's it love is a reward in itself because some sometimes people think that hey where do you get the motivation motivation is that i am loving my lord that is the motivation to love the lord for the fulfillment of a desire is not a true love it is a desire prompted devotion kamna bhakti or it's called a sakam bhakti that is like a commercialization even in religion narad ji is saying that is not love a true devotee never comes to demand anything from the lord except more and more love for him when lord krishna asked kunti kunti bhua what should i give you ask for anything she said give me pain again and again hard times again and again so that i do not forget you when hrinay ka shab sasan parlad narsinghi bhagwan came he said ask me something he said give me so that i never ask that kind of a desire that i never ask for anything that is love when there's no desire at all just to enhance the love for god because to a lover there's nothing more sacred than the beloved all his urges all his demands in life are to acquire possess and enjoy his beloved that's it what god god and only god nothing else worldly desires should be gone that is nirodh 
If the worldly desires are not gone, we haven't even enrolled into this, this level of school. Okay, so formula of take, take or take, give, we should disregard. It should not be in our mind anymore. Desi that's why these rishis, they say, even a desire for mukti. And that's why Lord Krishna, towards the end of Bhagavad Gita, what is the last chapter? Moksha nyas. I don't even want moksha. Okay. So that is the height. Because mukti is for self-happiness. Right? For yourself. Because we say that this world is full, full of miseries. I don't want to come here again. I don't want miseries. So desire for mukti is totally against the path of the concept of bhakti. God, keep me wherever you want. As long as you are with me. If you want me to serve, I'll serve. If you want me to suffer, I'll suffer. But you don't go away from me. Because Ved Vyasji, he has given in the Puranas four Purushats. Dharam, Arth, Kam and Moksha. Sure, those are there. But on the path of Bhakti, you go beyond that. Love is without self-seeking. Your desire in the, this kind of a love relationship is to give God happiness. God, you are happy. In my misery, that's fine with me. In my service, that's fine with me too. As long as your happiness is there. All that happiness is divine. If you have a great voice, sing in the glories of God. If you have money, serve with that money to God. If you have literally skills, you have desire to write, write the glorification of God. That's how we serve. So whatever God has given you, you desire to glorify him with that. That is a proper desire, that I am serving God. God is the focus, whether it's the art or whether it's anything else in life. Desire to serve him with whatever he has given you. Okay, this is what Naraj is saying. So my happiness in his, his in happiness. So, nirodh of the worldly things. Sarna kamiyana nirodh roop tovat. Because otherwise people say, how we are going to live in this world? If we don't have the desires, this desire is okay. Desire to serve him. Desire to make your beloved happy. Now in next verse, in verse number 8, nirodha tu lok ved vyapar nyasa. <coughs> Nirodha, this renunciation. So he's further talking about renunciation. Two means indeed. Lok means secular, worldly, ved, religious, vyapar, activities, nyasaha, renunciation. This renunciation indeed is in the total giving up of all secular and the religious activities. So in other words, to a person who is living in unbroken memory of the Lord of his heart, it's like a constantly the worldly duties or religious duties, religious duties, Ved means, Ved means over here, the Karamkand. Because there are a lot of rules in the Karamkand. Vedas, they talk about that the details of which direction our altar should be, our face should be, how should we sit, how to light the fire, 
which mantra, how to say that. So even in the sacred duties, there are rules. Worldly duties, there are definitely rules. But this renunciation when you have done, when you are connected with God, you remember that these are all means. You have attained the goal. You are going after the goal. So that's why bhakti is a nirodha rupi. All the unnecessary worldly things we do, the lokik, and all the ritualistic things we do, they can never please God. God is pleased only with our love for him. But in our case, we are constantly trying to please the worldly people. Still, they are not pleased. So Bhagat says, I want to just become one with God. Please God only. Take care of, rest will take care of by itself. See, Karmakand in the Vedas, they were created in order to regulate us. It's almost like a, when we teach a little child how to remember the alphabet, how to write the alphabet. That is to regulate. But once a child has learned all that, then they don't have to repeat all the alphabet. So Karamkand is like that for a devotee. It was a reason, but still if we just stay attached to it, which direction and which time? No. All the times are good, all the directions are good. All we have to do is just detach from this world and attach to the God. Okay? So, see, sometimes people think that world is their goal. And they make God as a mean. To these people, Karmakand is very important. If I do this, I'll gain this in the world. Okay? So world is their goal and God is the mean. But when they move a little bit up, they think God is the mean and world is the goal. So it can be either way. They both are at a lower stage. God has to be the mean and God has to be the goal. Bhagat. Do not get stuck in the intermediate level. It does not serve the ultimate purpose. Karmakand is there to learn how to surrender. We learned this in, again in Bhagavad Gita in the second chapter, 45th verse. You can go back and check it out. Dear Lord Krishna says, Tre gune vishyaha veda, ni tre gune bhav arjuna. Rise above these rituals. Do not become a servant to these rituals. Because Karmakand is also Trigunatmak. It could be Tamsik, it could be Rajsik, it could be Satvik. You got to rise above this. That is the kind of a dharma, param dharma, where these rishis are taking us. Okay? So, we'll start with the verse number 9 next week. But, uh, uh, and especially in verse 11 and 12, Naraji is telling us how to live in this world. Because we do have to live in this world. We do have a body. While doing bhakti of this level, which is a nirodha rupi, how to live in this world, not drown into this world. So that will come also. But I will like you to just make your own notes and try to see how these sutras are connected. And what do we really take home? How should you practice? So that the heat of or intensity of your love for God increases. 
that's why we are studying the scripture okay so i'll stop it here and then i will take some questions and afterwards um uh, abhajan also uh, i think uh, maybe kamla can sing today if she is there om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnase purnamadaye purnameva avashyate om shanti 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 om thank you very much sorry about that sound from outside but uh, uh, that sound is gone now there's one question nena yes nena you have to unmute un nena unmute yourself uh arji can you please explain more about nirodh rupi a uh, nirodh rupi is like a renouncing nirodh means uh, letting go letting go of these entanglements worldly entanglements also and then ritualistic if 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 ritual is keeping you at a lower level let that go also any kind of a superstition that we need to let go that this day is not good it's not a, a shubh muhurat so those are all superstitions okay for a bhagat of this level god is everywhere god is all the time all the days are good all the times are good we don't have to wear those uh, um, um, uh, special stones to get rid of uh, some omens we don't have to be worried about uh, the formation of the stars uh, grah i want to just love god that is it okay not to, because lot of there are other sciences are there but those are all worldly sciences whether it's a number or whether it's a jyotish or anything we want to just uh, love the creator of of it all okay that's what nirodh is so at the word so that's why he used the word lok and ved okay at the worldly level also and at the ritualistic level also if it's keeping us earth bound we got to let that go nirodh okay thank you harji so that's how i understand harji i have a question who does i do i do i can just oh, kind okay. of ask you so these um cans on in um, there were rituals and everything were obviously you know brought in but for a person who uh, was say never a believer but if these rituals kind of implemented and then they can get on the path once they're on the path then let this thing go correct yeah it's almost like a child we want child to start walking okay we give a child a little sport those walkers right but after a while we just let the child say let go of the walker okay right, right. Or, or another example is those three wheel cycles three wheelers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we want child to just go fast on the bicycle not a three wheeler okay there's a purpose when the purpo- person is weak there's a purpose but do we want to stay weak do we want to stay attached no or even uh, that uh, rosary the mala mm-hmm. that's why the yogis what do they say kar ki mala chhod kar man ki mala fer okay kar means hand do we want to just stay attached that's why it's really funny that when the yoga studios also they sell these they think there's a power in the beads power is not never in the beads power is in the mind and then ultimately power is in the god so we got to have these concepts clear otherwise we just are clinging to that a support which we needed when we were weak but now we are strong okay so this is what he is saying because this this scripture is for a bhagat 
who wants to become one? One. One. Okay. Okay. Uh, Neetu, Neetu has a question. Yes, Neetu. Sorry, I'm a little weak today. Uh, okay. um, my question is, uh, Harshji, um, I tend to see God in everything when good happens, but when things don't work in our line with our ego mind, then um, how do you see that equanimity that we want to achieve through the level of Samantha in Gita, it says you should be good and bad. How do you see good and I mean, good is very easy to see God in good, but when I don't see good in um, non-good, I mean, not so good, I don't want to even say bad, how do you cultivate that drishti, samadrishti? Samadrishti, we always got to remember, see, there are two uh, elements to the or Vedic philosophy. Okay. Law of karma. Uh -huh. and uh, reincarnation. I see. These are the two fundamentals of Vedic philosophy. So when bad happens, we got to remember. Maybe in this lifetime, I don't know, but somewhere I must have done something that I am suffering right now. Uh -huh. Nothing happens without a reason. Mm -hmm. So in that time, remember God even more. Mm -hmm. Draw strength from God at the bad times and in the good times also remember God. Uh -huh. Be thankful to God. Okay. But even in people, like person, like we meet people and we have we start in awareness, at least when you have awareness, you are aware that you are constantly aware of this discrimination part of you. You know, there is no atmic connection with anybody we meet in our life and that's where i want to realize that how how to see everybody everything every cell of this universe as god we cannot see in other people god the first the easiest way to see god is to see god in your guru oh okay Okay. A person who has really recognized the God in the Guru, that is the very first step. Okay. Because it's easy to see God in the Guru. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. God is, Guru is very transparent. Mm -hmm. More the transparency is easier you will see. Other people you cannot see. Don't even waste your time. Okay, okay. Okay, see the God in Guru, and then you will see that, keep on doing your sadhana, ultimately, you'll be able to see God in everything. Okay. That day will come. Don't jump to that level right away. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy that you, you, you were in the company of your Guru for so many years. That's why when you see you, I think about him, like he always had that, I see my Krishna in each one of you. And that thought is in my heart. Like, how is that I am still not able to see that drishti? Don't worry. That... Don't worry. It will come with the time just right now. Whenever there's a fluctuation, just take your mind to the image of your guru. Okay. 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 A person who has really realized the God in the guru, that person has entered into this school. Sure, there's a more more uh, work need to be done, but that is the very first thing. So because the guru has entered in the situation. I, when I need to make a decision, I just think about my guru. So guru has entered in you, in your, in you. That's the like yeah, guru, guru enters. Is, guru is a, guru has given you the blessings. A guru, a guru has planted that seed, but then we have to water that seed so that it becomes a tree. Okay, guru, guru only did that, planted the seed. Okay. Guru doesn't do anything more than that. Guru says, you got to do it. Uh -huh. I did my part, rest is yours. Okay. But that seed stays there. That seed does not go away. That seed is one which is immortal. Okay, <laughs> so you got to just keep on watering, keep on nourishing that seed. Okay. Okay. So your guru has entered in you too, you know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Neetu. Who else has a question? Uh, yes, Pramila. 
Pramila. Actually, um, I just wanted to follow up what uh, Jyoti said about rituals, uh, doing the mala and this and that. I think that was the initial step when you do the mala, you learn how to do calming yourself. So yes. gradually you forget, but you keep on doing the mala is like, it's in your basic rituals. You keep on doing those things. If, 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 you, you, yeah, if you need to, if you still need to keep on doing it, but ultimately you got to let go of these uh, uh, elementary rituals. Because when the time comes to, to leave this body, mala is not going to go with us, but the mind is going to go with us. That's why they say, kar ki mala chod kar, man ki mala jab. Okay? So elementary, sure it was needed at, the, at that time, or maybe it's needed now too, but ultimately we got to rise above the elementary level. I understand that, but it's like part of me. Mm -hmm. I keep on doing it unconsciously, consciously, all the time. Okay, good. That's good. That's very good. So yes. it's like behind my mind. Yeah, so you are doing it. So you're doing it with your mind then. All the time. Good. So Excellent. This is what you need to just keep on doing it. Yes. Okay. You are so, I mean, there's no harm in it. There's no harm in it, no. That's what my question was. Yeah, no, there's I mean, no harm. Yeah, keep on doing but it. But so many years I've been doing it, so uh, I have to still work on reaching this level, what you taught today. Yes, definitely, definitely. We got to, and this, we, we reaching there, it does take effort. This is the practice we need to do, okay? Make the worldly duties less important than the sacred duties. And the most sacred duty is to establish this relationship with God. Okay? So because otherwise these worldly duties, they just uh, overpower us. Let go of the worldly duties. Okay? That's what I saw my Guruji doing it. My sister is sitting over here. She'll tell you this. When she got married, in India, there is a rivaz hai, barat late ane ka. Barat was late. And it was a time for him to do the arti. What did he do? He said, my God is waiting for me. I'm going to do arti because this is the time. Barat came, waited outside. They did not say, why did you make us wait? Mm -hmm. They respected him like God then. Nice. They were not part of the ashram before, mm -hmm. but they became part of the ashram. When they saw this kind of a commitment, mm -hmm. otherwise or every person will say, no, my daughter's wedding. No, I'll do arti tomorrow. No, for him, not even a minute here and there for the arti time. We got to let go of the low kick. Put more importance to the Vedic. Then let go of the Vedic also. But gurus sometimes they go through this ritualistic because they are teaching us also through that. Even after almost 50 years, I remember this. I was a young girl at that time. But I uh -huh. remember it so clearly that this is the step he took. And that's how I make, I try to make my decisions. Whenever I have to weigh between these two. That's what Guru does. Okay. Thank you. Shall I say something? Please? Yes. Yes. Uh, I have experience and I have seen in India that when we do all these rituals, we become addicted to that. And then if we don't do it, we have a fear. 
we develop a fear that God is going to punish me. Today, I did not do this. And that fear is terrible. Like, for example, oh, I am on upwas. I am not supposed to eat salt today. And by mistake, if I eat the salt, I feel so fearful, but no yeah. more. Anybody, no more. Who, yeah, anybody who does that, the rituals to the fear, that means they have not studied Bhagavad Gita. Yes. The very first thing Lord Krishna says for a jnani and a bhagat and a yogi, fearlessness. Yes. So we don't want to connect with God or the rituals out of fear, out of love we should. Okay, the, the, the basic energy behind our rituals also should be love. Like my, my Guruji, it was a love for the God. God comes. I just don't want my God to wait. Not out of fear. I never saw any fear on his face. It was a love. Because anybody we love, we don't want them to wait. Right? Yes, I understand that. Yeah, so fear, no. After studying all these scriptures, yeah, yes. we should not be afraid, but we should have more and more love. And that's what Naraji is telling us, teaching yes. us how to cultivate the love which has this kind of intensity. Yes. Not just a superficial love. Not a love where we want, want, want from him. A love where we want to make him happy. I want my God to be happy with me. That's all. Yes. Just like we always wanted our parents to be happy. I want my God to be happy now. Okay. So anybody else? Or, uh, uh, yeah. Shall I ask one more question? Sure. Sure. Uh, sometimes I really don't know how much more in which, which way I should develop this more and more love for God. I don't know. I don't know sometimes, you know, but what I need to do. Just a name and the form of God. These are the two ways we develop love. Keep on saying the name. Keep on remembering the form. That's all. There's nothing else we need to do. Okay, worldly relationships also, we just say the name. We remember the form. Okay, so okay. it's okay. You are doing fine. You are doing fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You are yes. blessed. You See, are blessed. These, these emotions which you have, that means love is growing. Love is growing. Okay? Yeah. Feel the presence of God next to you, inside you, behind you. Just like Arjun, he just kept doing the pranam from the front, from the back, from the side, everywhere. Just think that wherever you go in your house, think God is there. Yes. I'm sure you have pictures of God everywhere. That's one thing we should do. No matter which room you go, there should be God. And our head should bow down automatically. That's love. Instead yes. of looking up our own pictures, children's yes. picture, grandchildren's picture, no, God's picture. Yes. Okay. So that's how we increase the love. And the more we think, more yes. we think. Okay. Yes. So Kamala, are you going to sing today? Andy. Okay. Thank you.